we baked you a challah. And of course, it's got a, a saw in it. But to get the hand saw into it, they had to shape it like a giant cock and balls. They sure <laughs> did. And I know, I know our listeners are thinking, it can't possibly look that much. Listen to my fucking voice. Yes, it does. <laughs> this looks this looks more like a dick and balls than my dick and balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I stood next to the TV, dropped crown, I compared. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we need to make fun of a different religion. I'm your host, No Illusions. Keith will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. And this week, I'm Nazi propaganda. That <laughs> you are. <laughs> and actually, you won't be the only Nazi propaganda joining us today. We also have our special guest masochist, Moishi. Moishi, welcome back. And it's been too long, sir. Yes, it has. So good to be back on the show, Noah. And you're going to say that even after watching it. The thing is, you know what it is, is that we very rarely make Moishi watch anything long. That's why he still <laughs> likes us. Yeah, That's which is really, back. it's really in everybody's interest. Yours, <laughs> mine, the listeners. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that our listeners are used to whenever we introduce the guest, the guest going like, I hate you guys and I want you to fuck off and die. And you're just like, it's great to be back. <laughs> oh, you know? I've never listened to this. I've never listened to this fucking show. Oh, well, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. All right. So tell us, Washi, what will we be breaking down today? We will be watching Secret Agent MS and the mystery of the missing push. <laughs> okay. Is that, is that a real thing? The po- is that a real <laughs> yes. word or are they just fucking with me on that? It's, it's a real word. It's not what we ever called it. Like, I don't know about you, Eli. We always called it just like the Sadaka box. I never heard. Mm-hmm. I, we didn't use push key that often. Yes, but for the listeners wondering if Jews do have giant celebratory boxes of money. Oh, yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> we do Although, have those. It's worth saying we don't usually talk about it to the public, let alone put it in a direct-to-home video movie. <laughs> I, I think they were counting on all of us having given up by episode three. They're like, no, we could put in the giant box of money at this point. It'll be fine. Episode five is Agent Emmis and the blood libel. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for that one. <laughs> All right. So but my question, though, is like, honestly, like, was the one in this movie comically oversized? Are you or are, is that like a real? No, nope. pretty it felt small to me. <laughs> Jesus. And and here's the best part. They did not include this in the episode, but I don't I don't know if you did this with your Tzedaka box. But as part of the unveiling of the Tzedaka box, they open it from the front and all the money pours out onto the floor. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's our that's our high holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the celebration, at least when we did it with our Tzedakah box, was literally opening it up, allowing our Jew gold to spill onto the floor <laughs> before <Jesus> us. <laughs> Everybody cheers, and then they scoop it into a giant Jew bag. <laughs> and and the causes they go to, you know, it's it's weird. I remember like ours would go to like building the fucking uh, you know, uh Sukkot thing. You know, like it's not like it's going to the, L- <laughs> it's not the, like it's going to the ACLU. Like, right. no. <laughs> no, never. Wow. At best, you're getting like an especially nice sukkah that year. At worst, it's settlements on the West Bank. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel very bad that I couldn't get from Sukkot thing to the word sukkah. <laughs> that, that's in my brain. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well. If you've loved the uncomfortable anti-Semitism that Agent Emmis has stirred in your heart on the other episodes, but you didn't feel like the show was in on the joke, <laughs> you will love this episode. Again, this movie inceptions its anti-Semitism in an episode about a secret box of money that Jews have. <laughs> it ups it. It ups yeah. it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it does up the anti-Semitism. Absolutely, it does. And is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Yeah, I, I actually struggled with this. It was either the best worst depiction of the Jews or or the worst best 
picture of the people. <laughs> All I know for sure is it makes me feel like maybe there were fine people on both sides that day. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe they shouldn't be replaced by. Uh, yeah, so, no. Okay, don't, maybe, are we? <laughs> Are we the baddies? <laughs> so, well, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to tie mine back into uh, Eli's description of it. I'm going to go with best, worst, pointless, giant stack of cash. <laughs> right. I'm the kid, the kid that opens yeah. up his wallet and he's got like 70,000 $10 bills in there and shit. There's no reason for that whatsoever, except for to be like, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that, that part. Sometimes that we do have that. <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. Still still struggling with that myself. And I know I usually give away the game here, but all I'm going to say at the outset is best worst motivation for a villain. <laughs> I'll set it up this way, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything. This episode is a caper about who stole the pushka, the giant box of Jew gold. The reason the person stole the giant box of Jew gold would make Stephen Miller blush. He'd be like, okay, that's a little much. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of Yiddish to explain to Noah on the other side of this break. So we're going to keep it brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the stereotype reinforcements that are Agent Emmis and the case of the missing Pushka. Gentlemen, welcome to the writers meeting for episode three of Secret Agent Emmis. Hey. Now we've all fought for 45 minutes over the temperature of the room and we're agreed that everyone is unhappy at 72.664 degrees. I'm just saying that I have the asthma, though. All right. So who's got ideas for the show? All right. All right. What about Agent Emmis doesn't know how to speak English because they don't teach him that in his tax funded yeshiva, though. Eh, that's kind of every episode, though. Uh, oh, oh. What about Agent Emmis and the argument about whether that passing comment was specifically anti-Semitic? Nah, this stuff is for kids. Um, Agent Emmis and the blood libel? Eh, too believable. I got it. What if we base our story on a whodunit around a giant box filled with money that Jews keep in our safe? It's I perfect. I love it. Great. Now, let's celebrate with some off-brand soda, which is both flat and hot from the sun. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up on the police <laughs> rushing to the scene of a prison break. Now, I want to point out these are real police cars driving in a real town very quickly with their lights on. Just no matter how insignificant the town or the hour, I want everyone to keep in mind throughout all of this that at some point for this episode, traffic was blocked. <laughs> <laughs> they also say that there's been a prison break from the prison, and I wrote in my notes, as opposed to the bakery? Yeah, right. A prison break. Repeat, a prison break at the prison. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they also say the suspect is driving a 1993 Cadillac, and someone really just wanted to show off their 1993 Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, and for the crime of evil. Yep. Like, I get why this guy's, bit, why this guy's pissed off, all right? That is not a... That's not a very fair charge <laughs> to be taking away someone's freedom. Well, yeah, though, no, they say the uh, on the radio, they say subject is considered extremely evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, black. Is, is that what? Oh, no. OK, no, it's but no, it's Dr. Lotov, the evil bad guy nemesis of Agent Emmis, who was apparently arrested in the last one and is now breaking out of prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. This movie's so Jewish, even the bad guy has a nagging Jewish mother who pretends she's dying when she has to do stuff. Okay, <laughs> hold on a second. Let's just, we, we've gone over this in the first show. He's just a fucking Jew, right? Yeah, he like, appears to be just a Jew. <laughs> what, the more you come to understand about Lotov's nefarious fucking plot, the clearer it becomes that he, I, can't, I can't break it down. I can't break it down because it makes no fucking sense. But he, <laughs> he believes in the Messiah. Yep. yep. He believes in the power of mitzvot. Mm -hmm. I'm confused about what kind of Nazi he is. I feel like not <laughs> enough people have spent time asking Lotov what the end goal is because it's very confusing. <laughs> well, you know, but that's a common theme among uh, children's show bad guys. So I'll give them that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, he's the evil bad guy. Anti Jew. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, no clue. And we, we covered the, the pun of his name, right? 
of, of the, the genius cleverness of the show. Mm. Did we cover this in the last? I don't, I don't think so. So Lotov is Hebrew for no good. It just means literally it's just he, he's Dr. No Good. That's okay. the fucking joke. Mm-hmm. But what's even better is that MS's organization, I didn't catch this in the first one we watched. I caught it this time. Their thing is called Tov Me'od, which just means very good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just Dr. No Good versus the very good. That is, that is go. the battle taking place here. And and I got to tell you, you know, that that attention to detail, that kind of creativity really just permeates the entire project. <laughs> so <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So good. All right. So Dr. Lotov's being driven home from prison by his mom. His mom is very upset that he managed to get himself caught by a little kid. <laughs> although, although to Dr. Lotov's credit, he goes, how could I have stopped him? He has thousands of years of Torah behind him. This guy <laughs> loves the fucking Torah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So but then the mom has like a heart attack or either that or she's just fucking with him. We can't tell. Right. If they're, <laughs> which, or sure. It's just a. um. Jewish She's also a Jewish mother, so it's impossible yeah. to tell. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And they they somehow got an old actress, but still put her in the world's stupidest old woman wig. Right? Mm. Like, why? <laughs> it's like putting cat ears on a cat. Like, it's just the <laughs> weirdest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever seen. But if there's anything an all Jewish production is going to have, it's a bunch of spare wigs. So, you well, know, use true. what you got. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's a very niche joke that I don't know that everyone's going to get, but that's a great joke. All our Georgian listeners are like, why Jews wig? <laughs> <laughs> Not all our Georgian listeners. Damn it, okay. I joined Parlor. So- I joined Parlor. <laughs> also, I, I want to point out Lotov's outfit. It's very clear he escaped from a concentration camp, right? <laughs> like he's literally wearing... The like striped pajamas with the lice hat, like the- yeah, yep. no, right. He's uh, he's full hamburglar. <laughs> it's weird how a non-Jewish person reads that outfit versus how a Jewish person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I went, I went, just, I went straight. I went like Assassin's Creed. I went back in time into the fucking camp like, when I saw that. Outfit. <laughs> right. Spoilers for the next game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be a good wow. one. They should do that one. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Dachau. Yeah, I can't wait to play that. Oh, I'd break out of Buchenwald. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. So then we, okay. So then we get the greatest intro in the history of television. And yes, I'm including Bible Man when I say that because Bible Man doesn't have the theme song that will now be stuck in my head for a week and a half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Secret Agent MS. I was counting on one of you guys to do the rest of it. So, yeah, no, that's all. I just I If just, this theme song teaches us anything, it's that there is a keyboard of less quality than Casio and the person <laughs> who wrote this theme song owns it. <laughs> I forgot. I know we did this in the last one, too, but I just every time we watch yep. one of these episodes, <laughs> yep. I forget that crazy scene where the kid almost eats shit. Like, and I'm like, you, you, <laughs> yes. there's no way for me to describe it properly to our listeners. They have to watch it. There's a scene in the opening credits where it's like an action sequence and he's chasing a bad guy. And this fucking eight year old kid, like, basically knocks down a fire escape stairs, but it bounces off the ground. Yep. And you watch this child actor come a fucking ball hair away from just. <laughs> Eating shit so hard. And I just was like, where was OSHA on this set? Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Well, so the one that always that I always forget and the one I thought you were going to go to was the example they show in the credits of how he's like, you know, this the Jewish superhero agent Emma's. And that's when the guy in the Groucho glasses tries to swap out kosher dogs for the demonic ones. Right. <laughs> and, and I get that like that. There's just a silly little thing that they're doing. But. But like they're giving this to Jewish kids. So like they're reinforcing this idea that there's like somebody out there who's trying to trick them into eating nut and kosher <laughs> hot dogs. And I wonder what that does to a child. Well, and the irony is like there are people out to get the Jews, but yes, this is not right, what but- we need to be looking out for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fucking Richard Spencer isn't going into kosher grocery stores and swapping <laughs> on dogs. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but once again, he survives the stairs in the opening and everything. And then we open up on the on the giant money box. And 
I got to say, I missed this on my first watch again. But my favorite scene, though, in the whole opening credits is the moment. Do you guys remember this where like the guy runs the red light and MS doesn't go after him because he's a good yeshiva boy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that for me was the first moment that I was like, this isn't realistic at all. If this kid were an actual Israeli spy, he would have shot that guy in the back of the head, gone through his phone, found his address, murdered his dog, carved don't fuck with the Jews into the dead guy's chest before stuffing his mouth with non-kosher hot dogs. (laughs) (laughs) My only actual note that I wrote in the document is needs more Munich. (laughs) Secret Agent MS Munich. It should be the final episode. Yes. <laughs> Agent MS, there's a little girl in there. There are little girls everywhere. Secret Agent MS. Imagine if the imagine if the Israelis didn't drug and execute Eichmann because there was a don't walk sign. <laughs> Secret Agent M is seducing Eichmann in a bar in Venezuela. <laughs> All right, this episode's got dark quick. Okay, so we, we, we're we not even out of the opening fucking credits yet. <laughs> All right, so we, we wrap up the credits and we open up in the temple. And I just, I love this bit at the very beginning. This doesn't tie into anything. This is just establishing shot shit where they're like, oh, remember guys, next week we're going to meet at Dave's house and then Henry's house so that their houses will be tax exempt places of worship. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> that. Very important. And then they introduce the gigantic box of money. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I blacked out for most of this scene. I literally just had five minutes of Vietnam style flashbacks to Solomon Schechter day school for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a rough go for, for Moisha. So for, for those of you guys who are not familiar with the listeners who are not familiar with what a push is, this looks like to the uninitiated, the kind of box that you would keep your robotic wolf ninja in until you unveil him to the world. Yeah. All right. Except it's it's so much more dangerous. It's Jew money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the span of three fucking minutes, they have a joke about tax exempt houses of worship. They have a joke about all the money they hoard. And they have a joke about how none of them like sports. Honest to God, if you showed me this and told me it was produced by Proud Boy Studios, I would not believe you. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. They really lean into a lot of those stereotypes early on. So, yeah. So H and M is in his you know mild mannered, just some little Jewish kid persona is sitting there talking to his dad. And he's going like, man, that is a giant fucking box of Jew gold, huh? And then they they established that it's been there for like 18 years now. It, could you guys explain to me what the hell's going on here? Is this just yeah. like a collection plate concept or what? Yeah. yeah, it's like a collection plate. But you remember how you did like a time capsule when you were in elementary school? Yeah. Uh-huh. We do that with the various wealth we use to control the media. <laughs> Come back later, <laughs> dig up a big box of money and spend it on some settlements. All right. But why... Like, but what's the point of waiting a particular period of time? Because it's not like, you know, the money doesn't it grow in value if it's just sitting in the box. Right? Yeah, we we like so the goal is to have enough to fill a swimming pool, right? And yeah. then you you dive in. <laughs> yeah, Moishi is kind of joking, but it is it is literally so that when you open the big box and it spills onto the floor, everyone's like, "Look at all that fucking money!" <laughs> oh, wow. And keep in mind, what you're sabotaging is your own charity or cause by waiting 18 years. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Right. (laughs) Okay. All right. Just checking. (laughs) All right. So H&M is just going like, wow, that's a whole bunch of money there. We could do some charity with it. And they're like, yeah, I mean, we could. And the bully kid turns around. Now, in this movie, I should point out, in this episode, they finally got a bully that's larger than Agent (laughs) Emma's instead of the little tiny kid that they used before. But the bully kid turns around and he's like, hey, would you mind shutting the fuck up? My dad's about to talk. (laughs) The genetics in this movie are we like uh, there's practically taste sacks should get an under five credit. (laughs) I will say that that bully ends up getting a beautiful arc throughout this. Yeah, I really I really feel like he ends up having the most depth as we will come to learn. Yeah. Well, even right here, I'm like, I'm I'm with team. I'm team bully kid. I wrote it in my <laughs> notes immediately when he told Agent Emmis to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so then this fucking stereotype shows up. This kid's dad, right? He goes, I shit you not. His opening line of his speech is friends, employees, debtors. I have a BMW. 
<laughs> traditional Jewish greeting. <laughs> <laughs> of course, everyone knows that Jews don't have BMWs because they worked with the Nazis. So you got to get a different nice car. Oh, right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, but but there's like he has and we're trying to establish that this guy is like, you know, only thinks about money kind of character. Right. Right. Yeah. But all I saw was the stereotype. I get that what they were doing in retrospect, but all I saw was the stereotype. And I thought, wow, so Proud Boys Inc. produced. No, OK. <laughs> no, all right. Also, spoilers. This movie will never be like, you need to care less about money. Nope. Ever. At any point. No, you find out some horrifying shit, apparently, about what we think about money. <laughs> yes, actually, we do. I watched this film and was like, fuck, do we actually believe that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there right before the first throw. So, yeah, and, but it, at this point, by the way, Agent Emmis's friend turns to him. You know, this this is uh, his buddy who actually knows his secret identity. And he's like, boy, I'll tell you what, I bet your arch nemesis tries to steal that giant box of money before this episode's over, huh? Right. And he says, no, he could never do that. They lock the pushka in a safe every night. And I'm like, isn't the pushka a giant box of money? Like, you just put a lock on it and it is a safe, <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be the safe? Okay. Oh, simple Noah, thinking that we don't have safes within safes within safes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you're a culture built around giant 18-year-old boxes of money, you get multi-layered safes down pretty quickly, <laughs> okay. right? No, fair. Yeah. fair. A lot of people don't know we control the safe industry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, Dr. Lotov's minion Clarence is there scoping out that giant pushka. Yeah. Right. We see him on the phone with Lotov telling him about it. But before he can get to it, he gets shoved by shovey Jews out into the street. Yep, he does. And what I loved about this scene is that it's it's not supposed to be like, oh, Jews are shovey. It's just supposed to be, oh, you know, that thing that typically happens. Jews just pushing past each other like a fucking <laughs> Black Friday stampede. <laughs> Yeah, but Agent Emmis recognizes this minion, but he can't say it because he's not in his Agent Emmis gear. He's in his mild-mannered, whatever the kid's name is, persona. So they make the joke about how his kid doesn't sports because he's Jewish. <laughs> he's the, the henchman's like, uh, sorry, I was just asking your uh, son about the sports definition. And he was like, look, there are three kinds of Jews. There are sporty Jews, sneaky Jews, and fat Jews. My son is very obviously of the sneaky variety. If you want a sporty Jew, you go to the JCC down the street. They're playing basketball there constantly and for all time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is like it's this is like the scene from The Dark Knight where Bruce Wayne is like at the party and the Joker's there, but he can't do anything because he's as yeah. he's there as Bruce Wayne. Right. And you can right. just see Agent MS is like thinking of nine ways to kill this fucking Goyam. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so then Emma's heads home, and we have this scene that's it's unnecessarily confusing for both us and our audience, but I have to keep it in because there's just not enough meat here for us to do a whole episode otherwise. The one where he comes in and he finds his sister dressing up as Agent Emma's. Yeah, and I've actually heard that the Agent Emma's subreddits were up in arms about the rumors of a female Agent Emma's reboot. So it was, <laughs> was good to see that this was just a gag. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So it turns out that she's just going to dress as Agent Emmis for Purim. Yep. Yeah. And they have a so they have this whole moment where like he thinks his cover is blown, but really it's just that his his little sister's Purim costume. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this town fucking loves Agent Emmis. Yeah, <laughs> this town absolutely. fucks with Agent Emmis hard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wrote my notes. I'm like, this scene just exists to make it hard to describe to our audience what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next morning, Agent Emmis wakes up to his b b bidet alarm. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote in my notes, <laughs> Noah, for $10,000, I would like you to guess what that bucket and two-handled <laughs> jug next to Agent Emmis' bed are. I'll give you a hint. It's called a Nagelwasser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, right. No, I, I, I assumed ass washing was a was a part of it. The movie tries to convince me otherwise. I'm un, I remain unconvinced. 
And for those who are worried about this and aren't actually watching the movie, a Nagelwasser is like a teeny tiny kiddie pool with a two-handled jug in it. And it's so you can Jew wash your hands right before you go to sleep and right when you wake up. Yeah. yeah. I want to be clear, not wash your hands in the way that actually washing your hands works. You just gently pour water over each of your hands three times and say a prayer because that's what Jew washing hands is. Yeah, but what kills more bacteria, soap or prayer? <laughs> Based on how America's doing, prayer. Yeah. Prayer. <laughs> so, but this isn't any, just some ordinary Nagelwasser. This is a Televos. It's a it's a bedadio. Anyway, so the <laughs> the boss from Agent Emma's agency, I guess, is appearing in his Nagelwasser because he like shows up a la Inspector Gadget's boss. Mm -hmm. You know, just in weird places. This time it's in in the Nagelwasser. And he tells him that the Pushka has been stolen. Yeah. And what I love is Agent Emma's is like, I mean, it's Dr. Loto, right? He, he does all the bad stuff in all of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's like, this is not just a simple case of burglary. And I'm like, how is this? This is this is the definition of a simple case of burglary. Somebody <laughs> it did <is>. something. <laughs> yeah, he says, and, and then just to make it so this movie is so Jewish, it's like hanging out with two friends that work at the same place and you don't or whatever. At, at this point, he says, Agent Nemesis, I need you to wash your hands, say Brookus and Shema, and then get right down here. And I'm just like, I'm not fucking going to Google that one. I just, I just got done Google. Standard military operating procedure. <laughs> Noah. Standard SOP. <laughs> so. And then I want to talk about this weird moment at the end of the scene, right? Because Agent Oh, is it the chewing? No, the, the chewing's pretty terrible. I don't know why that actor chose to eat a Jew cookie in the middle of this scene. It's very upsetting. <laughs> I'm talking about at the very end. He goes, Agent Emmis, before you go, and there's this super long pause, so long that I wrote in my notes, is, is he going to fuck him? Because it super seems like he's going to fuck this kid. <laughs> he doesn't fuck he doesn't fuck the kid. No, he has to go see an even more genetically inferior Jewish child to learn the tradition of charity. But before he does that, he decides to finish his cookie. And I shit you not, the director lingers on him chewing for nine and a half fucking it's seconds. So it's so wild. The over. weird. They're done talking. They're just like, this is our transition now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, OK, but before you can go on this mission to figure out what the hell is going on. You have to... Uh, I want you to watch me fuck this cookie with my mouth. <laughs> and then I want you to go see the extraordinarily Jewish kid who can pedantically correct your understanding of the Torah. Fish lips kid, whose name... I And I laugh at it every time. It's been three episodes in a row. His name is Chacham. Is the, it sure is, buddy. It sure <laughs> is. Is that the kid's <laughs> name? All right. So, yeah. So, Chacham is going to explain the laws of charity to him. <laughs> and this is uh, Noah's best worst, where he pulls out a giant wallet full of money for no reason. It, it's never apropos to the plot. It's like Travolta in Pulp Fiction buying the fucking <laughs> heroin. This kid opens up his wallet. It's just $9,000 there. He pulls out a $10 bill and he says, here, I'm going to hand you this. And he's like, why? He's like, there will never be a reason. I just wanted to show off my fat fucking stack. Well, no, he's, he's, using, he's using his fat fucking stack to explain Talmudic uh, sort of laws about charity, which yes. I didn't actually remember. I didn't, I mean, I remembered vaguely this, but I didn't remember the exact rules. Apparently it's good to give, and I'm, this is what they say in the movie. I didn't Google it. I assume it's true, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mitzvah to give at least a 10th of your income to charity. Mm -hmm. But this is the part I didn't know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm quoting this almost verbatim. If you give more than a fifth of your income to charity, so more than if more than 20% of your income leaves your hands, you're a dick. That <laughs> yep. is I'm I'm only barely par paraphrasing. I think the actual line is like, Emma's is like, but what if I want to give more than a fifth? And Fish Lips goes, 
then you're a sucker. No, he says. Like, he, no, he says. You're there's a, fool. a term. Then the Torah says yep. you're a fool. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, I, he says. But you can give up to twenty percent. And I just wrote as a joke. I'm like, there's a fucking limit. But then he's like, there's a fucking limit. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> apparently, that's a real thing. Like you're only like there's a line in, in something that says like only a fool gives more than that. To, and, and so I wrote this episode should be titled Agent MS versus any possible remaining goodwill towards the Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, before everyone gives the Jews too much credit, there's a bunch of exceptions to you being able to give more than 20% of your money to the temple. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> Unless exactly. it's a Saturday and the sun <laughs> is facing east. Well, then, <laughs> then you can triple your investment by buying here at... Liberty University. Or so, <laughs> yeah. But so the point is, number one, there's a limit to how much you should give to charity. God damn it. But number two, and this is the most important point that Hacham makes, is that charity is not about goodwill. It's about doing what you're fucking told. Yes. Yeah. He says that explicitly. He says that explicitly in the in the in the episode. Yeah. And when Emmis, little fucking socialist is like, OK, but if God wants us to give to charity, why didn't he just make everyone have the same amount of money and Hakam's answer is God made rich people and poor people so that the rich people can fix it yep. yeah right yes the, the repeated refrain of Judaism the you know Lord works in mysterious ways of Judaism God made the world broken so we could fix it <laughs> what a dick right like you imagine if like anything that did that right like the restaurant sends out your meal and they're like we mostly cooked it we want <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. We brought you into this restaurant so that you could finish the job. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. God made the rich people so that they could give money to the poor people. I don't know if that's more dangerous or stupid, but OK. And then Kacham asks for his ten dollars back. And I really wanted him to charge interest. Just like okay, ten dollars <laughs> and twenty five cents. <laughs> Yeah, you just wanted him to, like, juice that kid. <laughs> like Polly from the fucking Sopranos. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Now that we've learned something here today, I suppose we can pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Agent Emmis. Secret Agent Emmis. Always finds a do ba do do Hi, I'm No Illusions, and I'm here to talk about this week's sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. But most importantly, it cuts down the odds that you'll ever go to a restaurant with Eli, who's vegan, and Moishi, who's got celiac disease. I'm just saying, is it that much trouble to ask the kitchen to change their gloves? And that those gloves be kept separate from animal products or wheat? Yep. Unlike eating with Moishi and Eli, HelloFresh is easy and stress-free. Cut out meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on your table in about 30 minutes. Wow, it takes us 30 minutes just to ask questions about the menu. The first round of questions, at least. And unlike Eli and Moishi's diet of almost exclusively Oreos and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, respectively, HelloFresh offers great variety. HelloFresh offers more than 20 chef-crafted delicious options every week to help you break out of your recipe rut, try new things, and make any night feel special. Wow, that's a lot of choice. It is. And unlike the four restaurants Eli and Moishi are committed to, HelloFresh is flexible. Easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences and skip a week whenever you need right on the app. You can even keep your fridge stocked by adding extra meals or additional proteins, quick meals like breakfast on the go, or their 10-minute lunches and even desserts to satisfy that sweet tooth. That actually sounds really good to me. It is. HelloFresh sent us a box as an example, and I couldn't believe how easy and fun it was to make great meals in just about 30 minutes. So if you want to up your food game, go to HelloFresh.com slash GAM90 and use code GAM90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. $90 off? That's more than Eli and I get by sending back any and all of the food that comes to the table the first time. It sure is. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash GAM90 and use code GAM90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Hello Fresh. Anything is better than eating with these two, but some things are way better. Oh, don't say way. It makes my stomach hurt. What? Everybody change your gloves again right now. At least once, yes. Dude. <laughs> and so I said to her, You're wearing sandals. All I'm doing is taking pictures of what you're showing off for free. 
yeah, dude, I, I, I feel like we've had this conversation before. I don't think that's a good excuse. Oh, you sound just like the police. Can I say that? Hey, Moishi. Oh, my God. Thank God, Noah. Uh, so, uh, look, you've been on the show a couple of times, uh, and, and I wanted to thank you. So, here you go. Oh, that's so sweet. You didn't have to. Man- mango nectar. Yeah. Eli told me what you guys use it for and, and that you've never felt comfortable oiling up while, while I was here. So, I figured, you know. I'm, I'm sorry. Oiling up? Yeah. Thank you, Noah. He loves it. Don't you, Moishi? How? Don't yes. you? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Thank, thank, thank you, buddy. Nice. Thank you. Nice. All right. I'll see you guys in a minute for the record. Hey, Eli. Mm-hmm. What was that about? Oh, yeah. So after Noah watched this week's episode and learned that Jews actually do keep giant boxes of money, I told him the thing about Jews having horns is also real. You know, bing, bang, boom. Free mango nectar for our horns. Sure. Uh, are are you not worried about spreading that kind of anti-Semitism around? Uh, I mean, we're putting out this episode, right? Yeah, that's fair. You gonna drink that? No. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up this time on Lotov's minion Clarence getting his ass kicked by a hat, which means that at some point in the writer's room, this conversation happened. What should he fight? Hats. <laughs> really happened. Real moments in the yeah. universe. This is some birdemic level CGI mod oh, going on it? here. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, though, Clarence fucking sells it, right? That guy, there's nothing there. You know, you have to remind yourself it's added afterwards. He looks terrified of that fucking hat. Well, I looked him up. He went to Juilliard. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> J-E-W? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so, but he gets his ass kicked by the hat. Agent Emmis comes over, grabs his hat, and says, Ha ha, I caught you. And he's like, I'm actually going into a hospital to visit a person who's dying. So, yes, you caught me doing that. And my favorite moment of that reveal is Agent Emmis asks him what's in his coat, right? And he goes to reach in to show him the, the, the chocolates he brought for Lotov's sick mother. And Emmis goes slowly. Right. Like slowly reach into your coat. Don't do anything, you know, too fast. And I love it because it means there's at least the possibility in this universe <laughs> <laughs> that Clarence has a gun. <laughs> or, or that uh, Asian Emerson is going to take him the fuck out if he moves too right. quick. Too. Right. <laughs> I, love, I love the notion that he's just like slowly like that's going to stop this grown adult from shooting him in his fucking face. <laughs> But yeah, but this is where we learn that the real reason he's there is because Mama Lotov is dying. Mm-hmm. Not the plot point I was expecting from Agent Emmett. Nope. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. She's in the hospital there and they go to go in. But before they go in, the hospital administrator shows up and stops him. And she's like, excuse me, you're a random friend of the, the, this lady's family. I want to talk to you about her bill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, damn it. Where's Hachem when you need him, man? He had the cash to take care of this. And Clarence is like, don't worry. Lotov will get the money. And she's like, again, random hospital nurse administrator person is like, no, no, no. I've reviewed all of his financial records and can say verifiably he does not have the money. Yeah, yeah what? I took his blood pressure, temperature, and credit score. I know he doesn't have the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, and also, you're just some random kid. You can't go in there. And he's like, damn it, I wanted to go see my arch nemesis sick Mom, I just what would that have been like? You know, anyway, I, was, oh, I, <laughs> I would have I would have really enjoyed a arch nemesis is trying to be polite to each other in front of one of their six mom. It's the scene from Batman versus Superman where we find out their mom has the same name <laughs> 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 and therefore thereby ends their rivalry. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. Right. Yeah. All right. But no, no, that is not the case. But now with this new information, right, knowing that Lotov needs the money to pay a hospital bill, he goes back to see the boss. And the boss is like, huh, that might explain why we were getting such weird readings from our graph. And he shows this <laughs> this bar graph. It's a it's a 3D bar graph that's just kind of going up and down. It's just the cheapest, silly. It's Microsoft Word. It's Microsoft it Word. It I is. know that yeah. fucking graph. It's Microsoft <laughs> Word from 2007. <laughs> Yep. 
So, the fact that Clippy didn't show up and was like, it was not too very long. <laughs> it looks like you're trying to find a pushka. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you need help finding a pushka? <laughs> so, yeah, but he says the instruments have been giving us weird readings as though there was, you know, as though this was not a, an evil crime. And I'm like, what kind of fucking instrumentation do you have? And then, then they realize simultaneously that the reason Lotov needs the money is because his mother is sick in the hospital. And my note is, God, if only we could somehow structure society in a way where people weren't forced to take extraordinary and sometimes criminal actions just to afford basic health care for their families. Oh, but you know what? I realize that would require people to give more than 20% of their income to the common good. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? That, that would make those people fucking losers. Fuck yeah, losers. <laughs> fucking losers like the Bible says. I, <laughs> so this, I love this, this show comes so close to making a good point. <laughs> I love to. So he's like the boss is like, you know what this reminds me of is the story of Jacob and Esau. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> he's like, he's like, remember, because Esau was he was a terrible, terrible person in every way, but loved his parents. And I'm like, he was not the bad guy in that fucking story. He's not even a little bit the bad guy in that story. He's just covered in red fur. <laughs> he's just hairy. And soft. <laughs> <laughs> that dude gets so monumentally fucked. But the but the movie's like, yeah, that's what it is. Also, fuck that guy and his sick mom, right? Like like uh, Agent Emerson and his boss just sit there and laugh about how much that guy's sick mom can go fuck herself. Mm. Yeah, Agent Emerson is like, I'll give him a gold star when I put the cuffs on him. Yeah, <laughs> what? And the boss is like, hell yeah, sick mom. <laughs> and again, <laughs> this is a children's program. This yes. is like if Paw Patrol had the shooting of an unarmed black man and then the dog spend the rest of the fucking episode joking about it. <laughs> I can breathe. Woof, woof. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, so Agent Emmis goes home, you know, back in his mild mannered garb and finds his dad being arrested for stealing the pushka. Mm -hmm. And little sister is totally fine with her dad going to jail. And I was like, that's a weird character choice. But to be fair, he won't let her learn to read. So I kind of yeah. get it now. It, it brings yeah. it full circle. No, that makes sense. So, yeah, they, they uh, apparently the police suspect his dad of being the thief. So we cut to Emma's visiting his dad in the bird cage. <laughs> yeah, my my note, my note just says cut to interior Auschwitz day. <laughs> 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 this prison is fucking nuts. <laughs> so few Jews are in jail. We think you wear striped pajamas and they just keep you in a bird cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's wearing that same hamburger outfit from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, they just had the one. And I love their conversation because he goes, Dad, did you steal the pushka? And his dad says, no, the Torah says I can't. He <laughs> yeah. implies, if it didn't, I would steal the fuck out of that pushka. Did you see how much money was in that box? <laughs> well, and then the son is just like, I don't know, Dad. I might believe you. He's like, really? You might, huh? Wow. <laughs> wow. Might. But this is where he realizes that if he catches the real robber, they'll have to let his dad go. <laughs> yep. So I guess, you know, now it's personal or whatever. Yep. Well, he has a very particular set of skills now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a fake mustache. He's got yep. a flying hat. Flying this hat. Fucks, That's all right. You don't want to get in fucking. I've come to love these movies. I've, I, I've written a whole counter narrative in my head where Agent MS is just a bloodthirsty Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then we get the the scene where his two little sisters show up, pretending to be tiny little lawyers, and that's adorable. Oh, that's, yeah, very cute. the dick holla. Yeah, right. So, so the, the little girls are like, yeah, we baked you a holla. And of course, it's got a, a saw in it. But to get the hand saw into it, they had to shape it like a giant cock and balls. They sure <laughs> did. And I know, I know our listeners are thinking, it can't possibly look that much listen to my fucking voice yes it does this looks this looks more like a dick and balls than my dick and balls like, <laughs> all right i stood next to the tv dropped crowd, i compared it's uncanny it's crazy how much this bread looks like a dick 
<laughs> which I think was actually a very subtle joke on the daughter's part. I think that was her telling her dad, like, hey, dad, eat a dick. So I think you guys just missed the subtle humor. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. That daughter was my favorite character in the fucking show. So I'm all about it. Yeah. Oh, and I love this moment because right, the guard's like, hey, wait a minute. You don't eat the challah bread on Tuesday or whatever the fuck it is that he figures out. So he starts like pulling the bread apart to reveal that there's a saw in there, mm-hmm. but they've baked the saw into the bread so good that they can't like no matter how much he tears away, you still can't tell what it is to the point where eventually <laughs> Agent Emma's has to say it's a hand saw. <laughs> it's, it's a saw. It's a saw. <laughs> Just for like 45 seconds, he's pulling little crumbs out of the handle. And here's my question. I, I really like the version of events where the dad didn't check. And yeah. just ate the fucking thing. Like, like that was the daughter's plan. And like if the daughter's plan was to murder her dad by making him eat a saw, I got this. That's pretty fucking metal. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, a guy with a fucking non-kosher hot dog sticking out of the back of his head from the beginning feels lucky at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So now we're going to cut to Agent M is surreptitiously trailing behind Dr. Lotov, you know, trying to like get the skitty on whether or not he took the pushka. Okay. I have a very deep and important question about this scene. For the beginning of this scene, while Emmis is trailing Dr. Lotov, they have CGI'd a microphone onto his ear. Well, so I think there, there really was one and they CGI'd it to the, uh, at the end when it has to like retract. Yeah. Okay. I thought that it was CGI at the beginning and then we get a live action one and then they CGI it again when it needs to retract. I missed so much of this scene and had to rewatch it because I was just like, why would they spend the budget to CGI a microphone on his face? (laughs) So the part of this that really stuck with me, of course, was the website that was supposed to. Right. (laughs) At one point, he walks by the store where it's got like Judaism.com on the front of it and it just the whole goddamn movie comes to a stop while he looks up there and he goes wow that's apropos for both me and the audience huh Mm -hmm. Judaism for all your Judaism supplies I guess this would be the website to go to (laughs) anyway (laughs) by the way if you haven't been to Judaism.com it now forwards to Judaica.com and it's weird Jewish alternate universe Etsy. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Because Jewish culture only has three things. Those weird chocolate coins, candles and uh, and like a fucking dreidel once a year. So it's just like, all right, we got 17 different flavors of dreidel. Click here if you want to buy all of them. <laughs> So, yeah, but so Agent Emma is, is, is talking to his boss on his radio as he's he's trailing Lotov. But then Lotov, and he's like, don't, you know, don't get too close, Agent Emma. Dr. Lotov is bound to murder you in an alley or something. <laughs> this is such a weird scene. Yeah. He disappears and then Lotov grabs him. And then all of the actors simultaneously at this moment in the scene realize what? I can't actually fuck up the kid, right? Can I, can I fuck up the kid? There's, there's so much that happens in the buildup to that scene, though, right? Because there's the first of all, there's the moment where Clarence doesn't bring a gun, mm-hmm. where Lotov is like, did you bring the gun? And literally Clarence is like, I forgot. And he's like, how will we intimidate the kid? And Clarence goes, should I draw him a picture? And everybody's like, no, fuck you, Clarence. You can't draw. And I just want to say, it is not a good idea to reject anti-Semites artistic pursuits. All right. We should have learned our fucking lesson. <laughs> they do not, they do not take it well. <laughs> it's true. All right. Tell them their fucking landscape is pretty. Let them into fucking school. Yeah, right. So we don't have to deal with this again. Jesus uh, Christ. And then, and then like MS comes up on them and Lotov goes, if it isn't my four foot friends and MS goes, that's five feet to you, Lotov, as if he's different heights based on how familiar he is. To <laughs> I thought that was a dick joke. It's the weirdest. It's the weirdest fucking comeback. <laughs> that's Mr. Five feet to you. Jackass. <laughs> so, I also love that there's this moment where the two grown adults are just like, well, if we don't have a gun, what can we possibly do to this 11 year old? Right. That would that would be negative. <laughs> also, by the way, this this scene is filmed in the near pitch fucking black. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah, this movie has a lot of Nolan inspirations. <laughs> That's, I really felt uh, like okay. I saw the, <laughs> yeah. what they were drawing from artistically. Right. No, oh, right, right. Because so often I couldn't tell what anybody was saying. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so Lotov is like, fuck it, I don't need weapons. I'm going to hug you, but in a combat way, I guess. Yeah, and the only way, the only way to describe this hug is like a touchy coach hug. I don't know <laughs> quite like, <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, it's so hard to describe what the fuck happens in the next eight seconds. It's like if you're starring in a children's show put on by your local temple and then you're asked to wrestle a child. It's that. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And then he can't do anything to him from there. So he starts moving him. Like, 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 <laughs> like if you were struggling to move a piece of furniture that you also wanted to fuck. It's very <laughs> like he, he waddles him by the shoulders. I'm glad that you're keeping your analogies familiar for the audience. That's nice of you there, Moishi. So, <laughs> yeah, but... But then Agent Emmis is like, aha, but I did bring a weapon. Taser to the nuts. Right? Taser nuts. All Jewish kids get a taser pen. You get it at your bar mitzvah. It's great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good, call. Good call. So, yeah, so he tasers his nuts and runs off. And at this point, though, he's convinced that Lotov didn't do it on account of Dr. Lotov implying that he didn't do it. And Emmis has to strongly consider that maybe it actually was his dad. So he sets off investigating that theory. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he has to go check on like. So apparently the reason they thought it was his dad is because his dad's tire tracks were found at the scene of the crime. <laughs> yeah. And he, he calls back to base and he's like, don't you realize every car leaves car fingerprints? And his boss is like, tire prints? And he's like, oh, I thought they were called car fingerprints. Cool, <laughs> cool. Yeah, no. Those. And he's, he, he just starts poking them with a the pen. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he, he takes the dirt that the tracks were made in and he's like, I'll send you a dirt sample. I'm like, what? It's <laughs> They're going to come back and say it's <laughs> dirt. I mean... <laughs> I don't know how that would be helpful. But how many Jewish cars have been in this dirt? Ah, that's yeah, not right. helpful. <laughs> but just then, a suspicious guy with a shopping cart happens by. And, and when I say suspicious, I just mean a guy with a shopping cart happens by. Right? Yeah. yeah. Then he runs away. And look, he's running away without abandoning the cart. That is a losing proposition. But somehow, <laughs> Agent Emma still manages to uh, not catch him. Yeah. Well, there was a don't walk sign. Oh, that must have been it. I can't. <laughs> oh, God, that would have been exactly the time to pull the trigger on that, right? There you go. I could have been riding his uh, cart down the road like you do in the grocery store until your wife tells you to stop. All right. So Agent Emmis is, is going back home, like, in his Agent Emmis gear this time, right, to drill the suspect's wife, i.e. his mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so disappointed that he didn't have a Batman voice. <laughs> 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 I just love the little back and forth they have about the Jew food. She's like, here is a bowl of very dry off-brand pretzels. Would you like some Jew juice with that? <laughs> <laughs> this was my flashback to my temple days. Just the weird off-brand purple drink that never was carbonated in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I just, I love the idea that like this is like her kid standing there in a mustache and sunglasses so she doesn't figure it out. But little sister's quite suspicious. Mm hmm. So he's, he questions uh, his mom and he's like, so was your husband acting like he was uh, in a push Castilian mood or uh, <laughs> she's like, well, he did have a lot of motivation. Yeah. A lot of motive to do it. Again, things I wouldn't reveal in my movie that a lot of Orthodox Jews are in staggering amounts of debt because instead of making a living, they live off Social Security and fucking study Torah all day in their house, which they pretend is a religious organization. Yes. Yeah, I wrote they should have changed the episode's name to Agent MS versus the archaic notion that the best way to reduce income inequality is to rely on the corrupt and highly unreliable tradition of religious donations instead of just creating a stronger government social safety net like every other first world country on the fucking planet. I think nice. that would have been too wordy. So I <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, they probably couldn't get that yeah. into that. Yeah. Secret Agent MS versus the archaic notion of it. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't <laughs> I, the rhyme At this point, I'm also pretty sure like the dad did it. Yep. Like by this point in the movie, I'm like, we killed the Rosenbergs with way less evidence. I think I was fine with that. So. <laughs> so, well, yeah, and, and the mom, I love it at this point. She just goes, and you know, like, yeah, he lost his job. He was getting fewer hours. We were running out of money. And then those letters started coming 
Those letters are bills, right? She brings right. out those her bills. <laughs> right. And the reason why she refers to them as those letters is because mom, being an Orthodox Jewish woman, probably can't fucking read. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, oh, and we should also point out, by the way, that mom is pregnant and Agent Emmis already has two younger siblings. So she's working on four here. Yeah, she's going for her baker's dozen. Yeah, well, eventually, yeah. I, I just, I wonder if, like, in every single episode, he'll have one more sibling and mom will still be pregnant. <laughs> still be pregnant. <laughs> so. Episode 14, mom died in childbirth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then Emma's, uh, he goes to interview the rabbi at the temple where the pushka went missing, which is my favorite scene in the fucking movie, right? First of all, it opens up with Agent Emmis going like, did you notice anything unusual about that night? And to a person like myself, who was not raised in the Jewish tradition, that plays exactly like the joke in Men in Black after Will Smith has to deliver the alien baby. <laughs> <laughs> what wasn't unusual about that fucking night? <laughs> no, just the usual. We locked up our giant box of money, which is 18 years old and filled with charity. A man went up, bragged about what kind of car he has. Then he drove me home because even though I'm the leader of my community, I can't operate a motor vehicle. So, yeah, pretty typical. Pretty typical. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's like, well, uh, let's see what happened that night. Let me describe the opening scene of this episode in gruesome detail for you. Huh? <laughs> huh? But we are going to get a hint here. He says. I remember we stopped for something to eat and Mr. Bernstein, that's the guy who bragged about his car at the beginning, looked in his wallet for a 20, but he only had a 10. Mm. Don't you hate it? Don't you, you hate to see it happen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Agent Emmis goes, all right, one more question, though. You know, he, he gives him the fucking um, Columbo thing. And he's like, did you steal the Pushka? Rabbi? <laughs> and he's like. No. And he's like, right, right. Yeah, sure. You didn't see. Sorry. I just, I shot my yeah, the rabbi is like, hey, man, you know, why don't you just fuck right off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird for me to. Now I feel like I wrecked the whole conversation by ending it by accusing you of stealing the money. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> so then he goes back to he headquarters and the boss is furious at him. He's like, how dare you? Don't you know religious leaders are above reproach? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just obviously written by. Rabbi so and so of the such and such. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the lieutenant is so, like the, his, I keep calling him the lieutenant in my notes, <laughs> but the lieutenant, the lieutenant is so mad that he makes MS retire. He's like, turn in your mustache and hat. And yeah, bullshit. exactly. Give me your and badge it, and your gun. <laughs> It's weird that he let him keep the gun. I assume it's a union thing, but he makes him give up the. the <laughs> oh right, because he had to pay for that himself, probably. Yeah. Right, out of pocket. But my only note here is like, this lieutenant is full of shit. All right. How many years do you think it's been since he's been in the field? All right. Seen the things that Agent MS has made the hard <laughs> fucking calls. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you know what? Now he's going to try to put him on a leash. Fuck. You don't bring in a gangster like Agent MS unless you're ready to stack fucking bodies. That's all I'm saying about this. <laughs> My favorite bit on this is doing the they have the sad secret agent Emma's music playing in the background like secret <laughs> But I will say they, they break the stereotype here because he he turns in his badge and gun and he's like, Well, fine, if you're gonna quit, then yes, you can accuse religious leaders of stuff and and you can shock people in their matzo balls. Whatever you say, Angel, just, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's like, all right, so I'll, I, I, all right, well, I can't aff afford to lose you, so even if you're going to go rogue now and again, that's fine. I'll give you 48 Dude, hours he goes so rogue. to clear your dad's name. <laughs> he ends this moment by saying, you're the only agent who can fit through small openings, and I just wrote my notes, again, definitely a fuck stuff reference. Yeah. It's 100% a fuck <laughs> yeah. stuff reference. And just to, just as a real quick reminder of how bad the filmmaking is here, when he's like, he's like, you know, you're too close. I'm taking you off this case. Agent Emmis takes off his hat and his sunglasses and his Agent Emmis coat and his mustache. And he's like, that's fine. Then I quit. And the guy's like, oh, man, OK, well, then don't don't quit. You can stay on the case. And then we watch him put all that shit back on. <laughs> <laughs> So. But upside, but the mustache is upside down because that's hilarious. Yeah, well, that was made it <laughs> worthwhile. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Agent Emmis needs a minute to smear a little more glue on that felt mustache, so we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the next episode be about Agent Emmis controlling the media or starting all the wars? Did Eli and Moishi film this series themselves just to fuck with me? Given the budget on these things, how surprised would any of us really be? 
find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the Holmesian conclusion of Agent Emmis and the case of the missing Pushka. Agent Emmis, you've gone too far. You're off the case. What are you talking about? I'm trying to find the missing Pushka. But you've gone too far, Emmis. You accused the rabbi. He was at the scene of the crime. And what about Dr. Lotov? I, I, I hear you hooked his matzo balls up to a car battery. Damn it, Lieutenant, I needed the truth. But you told the snipers to shoot medics and children. Yeah, we're Jews. That's not really a deal breaker for us. Ah, uh, you have a point. Here, you can have your hat back. And we're back. When we last left off, Emmis had been given 48 hours to find the real culprit. And we're going to rejoin the action with him pissing away a significant amount of that time in Yeshiva. <laughs> and I love it. When he's not in his Agent Emmis outfit, there are three young Jewish children in this scene, and they look fucking identical. <laughs> I could not differentiate them with a gun to my head. I'm not allowed to say that, but you are. Yeah. So <laughs> one of the kids is going to get in trouble for losing his pen. And that, that, of course, is only there so that bully kid has an end to go. Well, why don't you ask Agent Emmis's secret identity's dad where it went? He's a thieving bastard. <laughs> right? Is yep. he? Oh, and then Bully Dad is just like, you know, and also, incidentally, my dad has been trying to get in touch with Agent Emmis to give him a clue <laughs> while I have you guys all here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving you this information. Also, here's my dad's cell phone number, just in case you see Agent Emmis. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you the guy that takes pictures of him for the bugle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and, okay. So, and what I love is that they okay. So they use these heavy-handed techniques to set up this next scene where he's talking to rich kid's dad or to bully kid's rich beamer dad, and instead of just going straight to that, we have this weird, silly, useless him detecting montage. <laughs> right? <laughs> we have like a thirty seconds of him like talking to people who are nodding and writing shit down in his notebook. Yeah, it's. You can literally hear the stock like audio from Law and Order in your head. But if you watch like the way they're talking, <laughs> yeah, that girl, I've seen her. She'd come in here sometimes. Yeah. Nice broad, though. Did something happen to her? Yeah. Like <laughs> what I love is that they interview a bunch of different Jewish women. But because they're Orthodox Jewish women, they're dressed identically. So my notes are all like, why is he talking to the same woman? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, my notes were, why is he talking to his mom again? <laughs> 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 all right. So now we cut to him talking to the BMW dad. And they shot this in the fanciest Jew house they could find. And I forgot how tacky rich Jew houses are. Oh, yeah. It's just like solid gold Toros on the wall and landscapes of matzo balls marching across the plains. <laughs> and listeners, don't if you're wondering, what it, what yes, it's... this shot is exactly what Moishi's house looks like. I have been there. <laughs> <laughs> this could have been shot in Moishi's home. Absolutely. Damn it, <laughs> Absolutely. I have... I have the nicest furniture covered in the most expensive plastic. <laughs> All it was missing is a bedroom that a cat lives in that boy, she's not allowed to miss it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So then before we can get to the interview between Agent Emmis and the dad, he has to kick his bully kid out. Right. He's like, hey, you go do some homework or something. I'm talking to cool Agent Emmis, not you. You schmuck. Yeah, and he's vicious to him. Yeah. He's fucking vicious. To, we find out that, like, the bully's, like, bullying tendencies are actually just the product of emotional transference. That, like, yes. his deep desire to exert control over those he sees as weak in the same ways his father dominates and humiliates him. Right? Constantly demeaning his <laughs> achievements, eroding his confidence and his intelligence, rejecting his pleas for love and validation, all meanwhile... The bully's desperate pleas from help for his teachers, his classmates, anyone are just dismissed as an ego-driven tantrum of spoiled brat, leaving young Avi once again alone. And my other note here is Avi looks like someone managed to breed a blowfish with an accountant, but they were somehow <laughs> brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> my other note. You feeling okay there? Yeah, we got it. We got you it. You know, I was having a moment. Good, having a moment. Okay. We can cut all, right. all no, that. No, no, you're good. You're good. The, we can cut all the, that. I was working the through something. The cat needs the bedroom. The cat needs the bedroom. <laughs> Where else it's fine for me to get a hotel. <laughs> Eli's telling a true fucking, this is the fucking world I live in. <laughs> 
It's so, gone terribly off the rails. <laughs> all right. So the so now the other thing that we have to establish before we get down to the nitty gritty of the interview, right, of the interrogation, is that dad is incredibly cheap and stingy and shit, right? Like before the sun leaves, he's like, hey, where's the change for that five that I loaned you earlier? Loaned. <laughs> he wants he loaned him the five, but wants the change back from it. And so the kid gives him the money. He's like, I seem to be about 10 cents short here. And I'm like, really, movie? You're just going to lean all the way in, huh? Okay. <laughs> and all I right. want to be clear. It's not bizarre that a character in a children's show would be this penny pinching. What's bizarre is, listener, this movie will never acknowledge that as a bad thing, and he will never change. Nope. Right? It's just like, yeah, Jew dads, am I right? Yeah, Jew dads. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so once we've established all of that, he actually starts, inter uh, Agent Emma starts interviewing him, and we learn that Mr. Bronstein doesn't think that Agent Emma's dad is the criminal. He thinks it's the homeless guy he saw wandering around near the synagogue because he's a homeless guy and they do <laughs> crimes. <laughs> For our listeners, we should explain what we mean when we say homeless guy. Because you're probably picturing a homeless guy. But these are orthodox homeless people. And you'd think that doesn't exist, but I live in a very Jewish neighborhood of New York City. I'm a hipster that moved in, but I blend in. It's camouflage. And they have those. Like, I'll walk yeah. down the street and I'll see orthodox homeless people in full orthodox garb, just dirtier, be like, you know, like spare a nickel kind of a fucking thing. I, 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 don't, I don't have a great even joke for this, but it's just like... Seeing an Orthodox Jewish guy is like, it's like seeing some, a, a Jewish school do a play in which there are homeless characters, but the kids playing the roles can't take off their Jewish stuff. Right, yes. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's like you're watching a Jewish play about a homeless guy, but they do exist. Well, that's like, it's weird to see a homeless guy in a fucking suit. Right, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's yes. Like, it, I, I'm, in, I'm confused that they're able to keep up all the Jewish stuff but they can't just get a fucking job. Like they seem like <laughs> equally hard tasks. So and, I don't yeah, know well, the one, the job one seems easier to me. But yeah, right. Well, but uh, I don't know when you. I'm no expert on homelessness, but I feel like a white button-down shirt is the last thing you want to wear when you're a homeless person. <laughs> do you think? Do you think they use the like the the wrapper to fill in to like shoot up? Do you think that that like, functions as a belt? Oh, so yeah. Like, is that too dark? <laughs> but can you picture that? Right? You can picture that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe what that's those... how they got started. I've always said to fill in's a gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> Have you already always said? Oh, that? you could keep your stash in the little box. Oh, it's there you go. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you can't look in here. It's religious. Now I know what to do with the fill in my mother keeps trying <laughs> to give me. <laughs> keep my weed in there. And so, okay, we get done with the interrogation with uh, Bully Kid's dad, and we get another little detecting montage because they still had some of that scenery left over. <laughs> and then we finally get around to him questioning in their words, the vagrant. <laughs> and he's like, hey, you have a shopping cart. Did you steal it? That's his opening. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Um, he's like, no, he's like, I, I always sleep behind the synagogue because when I do, I wake up and somebody's left me breakfast. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> And just in case anybody's tire tracks were there in need of it. Anyways, just in case. Any, all right. So we go back to his like detecting montage. And the only reason I bring this up is we get a shot of Agent Emmis's notes and they are terrifying in their lack of ability to write the English language. It is upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> so. But then his dad comes home. Yeah, well, because Mr. Uh, Bronstein has posted bail for his dad because he doesn't think he did it. Yeah, that's cheap Mr. BMW cheap. He's lucky his bail was less than one-fifth of that guy's salary or he'd be <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, so apparently when you make bail in this universe, they drive you home. The cops drive you home. <laughs> two cops, in fact. And they introduce these two cops. They introduce, they go way out of their way to introduce the fact that one of the cops is obsessed with with numbers and numerical totals and stuff, there is no reason for this at all. No. Nope. Right? We just, we spend a minute and a half with him going like, no, it's not 150,000, it's 175,000. I am obsessed with numbers. And his partner going, that is correct. He is obsessed with numbers. That is a singular characteristic. If I had to describe him in one way and only one way, it would be obsessed with numbers. 
Anyway, moving on. Yep. <laughs> and and by the way, that will just inspire Agent Emmis to go, hmm, end of the movie. <laughs> well, right, right. Yeah. He's like, wait, numbers. Hold on a second. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I didn't think about the numbers. <laughs> Well, okay, so yeah, so it's time for him to do his big reveal, and this movie is so fucking sloppy that we frantically cut to Bully Kid now talking on the phone. He's like, hey, I hear Agent Amos is going to explain who he thinks really took the pushka, and I want to be there to see him say that it was this kid I bully's dad, right? Yeah. And that's how they introduced that that's what's going to happen in the next scene. You know, in case we didn't figure out what was going on when Agent Amos stood in front of the five suspects and said... I figured out who did it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we go through. He like eliminates each of the potential suspects. He's like, it couldn't be the rabbi because he's too religious to do a crime. <laughs> right. And he like nods to the rabbi. and The rabbi nods back. He's like, that's right. That's right. Too religious. <laughs> when he does the homeless guy thing, he's like, maybe it was the homeless guy. He's homeless. <laughs> but no. Well, and, and that's and that's his thing. He's like, but there's no other reason to believe he did it other than his vagrancy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is going to be the payoff for this movie. The rich BMW bully guy's dad stole the pushka because he didn't mean to put twenty dollars in. He meant to put ten. He stole the giant charity box. So he could make change. This movie is Nazi propaganda. <laughs> yeah. They abandoned the Lotov premise so fucking fast. It literally, the mystery ends up being it was a greedy fucking Jew the whole time. It was. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then they explain, of course, that it turns out the reason that dad's tire tracks were there at the scene of the crime is because he's the one that goes and gives breakfast to the homeless guy secretly every every day and why didn't he just tell the cops this because it's more charitable when you lie to the police and take the fall for a crime that has nothing to do with your charity <laughs> according to the talmud apparently uh, I, don't, I have no fucking clue I, I you know but but apparently it's because giving charity anonymously is the best way to do it even if it means that you lose your freedom and your family <laughs> loses their source of income yeah, yeah, the Torah is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really? You don't say. <laughs> but don't you fucking donate more than 22%. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so then Bully Kid comes around. And he's like, ah, Dad, I heard what happened and I forgive you. Here's that dime I owed you. End of yeah. character arc. End yeah, of character yeah. The moral of this story, kids, is always forgive your abusive parents. Yeah. And don't forget to bring them that fucking money. You owe. Dime you owe them. <laughs> because he does not say, oh, no, son, keep the dime. I've learned to be better or I'm not going to be there. He's just like, thank you. The fucking end of these two characters. Yep. Yeah. That's the last we're going to see of them. Yeah, this dad might as well have pinned this kid over the edge of a fucking skyscraper and been like, where's my fucking envelope this week? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then, okay, so Agent Emmis goes to leave. His work here is done. And the rabbi stops him and he's like, hey, here's a giant stack of cash. We keep waving <laughs> these around in this goddamn episode. Oh. <laughs> so... But yeah, so apparently there was a reward that uh, Mr. Bronstein had offered for whoever could figure out who stole the pushka. And since technically Agent Emma's figured it out, he gets the twenty five thousand dollar reward. Or actually, they split it between him and the homeless guy. Right. right. Well, he's he that says, seems fair. He says, <laughs> I'm going to give it to the homeless guy. And then he goes, wait a second. I've got a better idea. Then giving it to the homeless guy. Right. And and he doesn't tell the rabbi what it is. So he just grabs a big stack of the cash and says, here, give this much to the homeless guy. This movie comes so close to making a good point. You could feel it whiz by on your fucking nuts. <laughs> you could feel the wind gently tickle you. It's so close. Oh, what I loved is when uh, H&M has took the like just random amount off the top of it. He revealed that there is actually like it's a ten dollar bill with a bunch of ones stat behind it. <laughs> you can see that yeah. for just a second. And I, just, I, I was I was quite fond of that. Like, I love that little moment. All right. So meanwhile, back at the hospital, 
They're about to kick Dr. Lotov's mom to the curb because she didn't pay her fucking bills. So fuck that old lady. You know, like hospitals do. Right. Jesus Christ. But they go in and the mom's like, hey, look, somebody paid my entire hospital bill. Hooray. But again, he's Dr. Lotov and he, he hates it when mitzvahs happen. So he's like, Agent MS. And his mom's like, wait, you, you wanted him not to pay my hospital bill? And he's like, my character is conflicting in this episode. <laughs> he, he gives an explanation, though. Yeah. He goes, because each mitzvah brings the Moshiach closer to coming back, the Messiah, which one weird that he believes that again, yep. just, yep. just throwing it out there. He's <laughs> obviously a Jew. I don't know how else we can say this. He's so clearly a fucking Jew. <laughs> but more importantly, I didn't realize that was a, is that how it works? Do we have to do Eli? Eli is that a, like, I didn't realize it was like a status bar in a video game. Like we have to tap X a bunch of, <laughs> yep. Like if we fill up our mitzvah bar, do we activate our specials? Is that how yes. this? <laughs> Absolutely. I don't remember. Orthodox Judaism is a get Zeno's runner here cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's very upset that his mom got medical care. My favorite moment though, in the entire goddamn show comes immediately after that. Right. So he looks at the bill and he's like, Wait a minute, there's a signature on this. It says, from your four foot friend, you know, blah, ha, ha, fuck you and your mom. You guys can all go to hell. And and, and I, I point that out because the whole episode, the point, the dad and the breakfast and the mystery, the whole mm -hmm. fucking point was that anonymous charity is the best fucking charity. And then this asshole signs his fucking name to it when he pays Dr. Lotov's fucking bills. Yeah. And then and then and then Lotov curses his name because as we come to learn, Lotov loves his mother, but he hates MS so much fucking more. <laughs> Damn right yeah, he does. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So meanwhile, so the families all sit around playing games, except the dad is like, I don't know, summoning something with the book. I don't know what the fuck he's doing over there. <laughs> but the rest of them seem to be playing some kind of word game with tiles. So I'd rather focus on that. Yeah. And this is where little sister's like, oh, man, I wish I could be a hero like ancient Emmas. And we have this weird post movie shot where she's bringing the guard some not dick shaped Hollis. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. So the point is, is that like, yeah, but you can do everyday heroic things just because they're not fun to look at. I mean, you're a girl, so like there's limits, but you can do some of it. Yeah, there's all <laughs> sorts of heroes, guys. There's crime fighters, firefighters, women who breed. You can definitely be one of those three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's one of those things you can be. <laughs> also, can we can we just talk about the fucking actor that plays Agent MS? He really sells that he's this like broken down vigilante by the end of the movie. <laughs> he's got this look in his eyes like he's just like, I can't keep doing this for this city. <laughs> so, Yeah, but after they give her the there's a lot of ways to be a hero speech. She brings a normally penis shaped loaf of bread to that guard because apparently that's heroic too. like, yo. Know, she gives it to him pretty fucking heroically. <laughs> yeah. But it couldn't be more than a total of like a fifth of their total bread because otherwise they're going straight Because yeah, they're fucking, fucking fools. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't want to be a you don't want to be a bitch, dude. <laughs> that's a, I don't know if you guys know it, but that's in the Torah. Don't be a little bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fine line between being a hero and being a bitch. All right. <laughs> Is the moral of this story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. All right. So, and then we get the Jewish credits of all time. <laughs> and then, <laughs> all right. Well, and that's it. Uh, so, okay, Moishi, that's, I think, four of these that we've asked you to sit through at this point. I don't know. But oh, it's yeah, man. I am an Agent MS expert. I want to see the John Wick <laughs> version where he just double taps his way through the whole fucking film. <laughs> I, I am obsessed with the idea that Tov Me'ud is actually just like an incubator for the real Mossad. Oh. And like each, <laughs> each progressive episode, MS like gets slightly more violent. Until Darker he's ready. and grittier. Right. <laughs> until he's ready to go to Europe and like 
murder some guy and his family for funding a terrorist attack. Right, right. His, his finally has his are you ready to commit to this program moment or whatever. Right. Oh, yes. The <laughs> final episode of Agent Emmis. He's like Look. in his 20s and a guy drops his groceries and the orange rolls out towards his foot and he bends down and gets it and hands it to him. That's the final <laughs> shot. <laughs> They bring him into a room. They've just got Clarence with a hood over his head and they have a single gun. What, what did he do? Doesn't matter doesn't what matter he did. What he did. <laughs> doesn't matter what he did. How'd you like to meet gold in my ear? <laughs> All right. Well, Moishi, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Are we going to admit on this episode that you're actually the kid that played Agent Emma? Or are we saving that for... We're saving that for a later episode. Okay. So thanks again, man. I'd love to have you on again. Hopefully we'll eventually find, uh, we'll see Agent Emma actually kill a motherfucker. Sounds fucking wonderful. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, you bet, man. All right. So that's going to do it for our review of Agent Emmis in the case of the Mission Pushka, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to convince ourselves to do this again. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, I'm glad that Moishi mentioned John Wick because this year in the middle <gasps> of his divorce, oh. someone let David A.R. White go see that movie. And so he made a Christian version all his own. It's called Beckman and we're doing it next week. Beckman's out what? already? Oh, I'm so fucking excited. Is this excited. really a thing? Yes. Yeah. I've been looking forward to this for quite a minute. All right. Oh, man. Okay, so usually I say this ironically, but this time I mean it. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 274 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the a Patreons that help with the show go. Yes. If you kind of like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Traps on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. That adorable, innocent little girl grew up aggressively undereducated to reinforce her dependence on a misogynistic cult. Everyone in this movie got and spread COVID. Yep. <laughs> Recording now, too. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you on, Eli. Now we're going to do the five count, Jason, which you will join us for both the numbers four and five. You can go on from there if it makes you more comfortable. That's fine. I have no issues with that. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Four, four, five, four, five. five. I will kill you. I will <laughs> kill you <laughs> where you stand. One more, go. one more time. One more time. Let's do it one more time. One more time. One more time. I'm ready. <laughs> I was so. I was trying to think of a joke to make, and I lost count. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! You lost count of five. <laughs> you got to four. I'm the way to five. You lost count. Uh, uh, go, 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 go. I got this. One. Two, three, four, four, five, five. five. <laughs> All right. Fucking um, nailed it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, Eli, what was the punchline to that joke? You were no, it's on? too late now. I'll, I'll work it in on this. I get a second take, so I'm going to work it in then. All right. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.